Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about a fiduciary, a fiduciary. So recently I've been doing some training just in the area of real estate and just learning about and some things that I already knew, talking about what a fiduciary is, is someone who is faithful and trustworthy and helps to manage negotiations, helps to manage assets or property, these types of things. And we're going to be looking at some scriptures today about how Jesus is faithful over God's house. He's faithful over God's house as a son. He's also the mediator of this new covenant. And just think about a fiduciary. A fiduciary is someone, uh, they have this example in the training that I've been doing. They have an acronym that they call Old Car. The O stands for obedience. You think about Jesus. He only does and says what his father says to do obedience. The L stands for loyalty, so faithful, loyal, trustworthy. The D stands for disclosure, which means you're being transparent in all situations. The C stands for confidentiality, but I would turn it into confidence. We're going to see some verses tie in confidence in this today. Just being confident in things. The A stands for accountable, given an accounting being trustworthy in the handling of things. And then the R stands for reasonable skill and care. Just bringing some skill and some diligence into the things that we do. So we're going to be asking for God's help today. Taking a look at these scriptures where it talks about just giving gratitude that Jesus is the fiduciary. He's the, the trustee overseeing everything that God's given to us. And he's faithful in that. But then it also says that we're supposed to be stewards of the mysteries of God. Asking for his help that we would be these fiduciaries as well. To handle these duties in the right way. But why are we taking communion every day? About 10 years ago, I had pretty much no spiritual life whatsoever. I was doing life on my own without God. Doing things my own way. But life wasn't going the way that I wanted it to go. At the time, I was running my personal training business. And the business got started. It was doing great at first. But then I got into some tough times where some months my business is losing thousands of dollars in a month. And I remember getting to this place of going for a walk with my wife and just telling her over and over, there's got to be a better way to live. There's got to be more to life than this. And it wasn't for a lack of seeking or searching because I've been traveling all over the country, studying with some of the best health and fitness experts in the world, reading books, taking courses, going to seminars. And not just health and fitness, but all kinds of other areas of life, like business and leadership and finance and relationships. But I wasn't finding what I was looking for. And then one day I came across this challenge to start reading one chapter from the book of Proverbs every day. Proverbs has 31 chapters. So on day one of the month, you read Proverbs chapter one. Day two of the month, you read Proverbs chapter two. And then you keep going like that until the end of the month. And then you start back over again. Well, I've been doing this for a little while. And then one day, Proverbs 13, 22, just seemed to jump off the page at me. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse got me thinking, what's the most valuable thing that we could pass on to future generations? Well, Proverbs tells us that wisdom and understanding are the principal thing. So I made a commitment. I want to pass on manuals and lessons and teaching for all the different areas of life. But really, when I got started, I had no clue where to start. So I began to seek after God began to totally immerse myself in the things of God. My relationship with him began to grow. He began to show up, began to teach me, began to train me. It wasn't always easy all the time because he began to teach me this new way of living. We would make him the source, make him the center of everything. But that meant I had to put off my old ways to learn how to do things and to operate my life in a new way. At times I found myself in some impossible looking situations. Only to see God just come through over and over again as my faith and my trust in him just continued to grow. And over the course of about 10 years, I just documented what he was taking me through, the things that he was teaching me. And it turned into this series of books and courses and now partners that we have called the Abundant Life Blueprint. But out of everything we do in the Abundant Life Blueprint, I do believe the most important thing is daily communion. Daily communion is what I call the number one table turner for all of life. Has the ability to create a turning point in our lives and turn things around, changing the trajectory of our lives going forward. Jesus says, as often as you do this, 
remember me. It's this opportunity to remember his sacrifice and all that his sacrifice did for us, giving us this new covenant with God. It helps us to abide in him so that our lives produce much fruit. The Apostle Paul says every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus, which in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation of all the benefits that are found in the new covenant. But it's also important we take it the right way. Every time we take communion, to take it with the fear of the Lord, with deep awe and honor and reverence for the sacrifice of Jesus, all that he suffered for us. But also remembering all that his sacrifice means for us, how it connects us back to God, gives us his personal relationship with him. So the process we typically use, we start with about a two minute long prayer that's mostly scripture. Coming from Ephesians chapter one and the prayer of Jabez and first Chronicles chapter four. And then we take a few minutes to examine ourselves because the Apostle Paul says some people are weak and sick and they die early because they don't examine themselves before taking communion. And if communion has the power to do that in the negative, I believe it has the power to make us healthy and strong and give us long life. It will take it the right way. And then after our time of communion, we've been talking about some practical physical workout tips. Because I truly believe physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. So let's get started with our prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching or listening, their families, all those connected to them, and our church and governmental leaders. I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear Son. Thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And I thank you that Jesus was smitten for us so that you could fight for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us. And the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us. And the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us, to make your face shine upon us and let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive your purpose and grace, your love and your goodness, and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today and help us be sensitive to those opportunities. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes and do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, we're going to go through the other half of prayer. This is our time to examine ourselves. Are we making today a masterpiece? And how are we going to do that? We're going to get connected to the master. We're going to bring our relationship with God down into today. And masters of anything are simply masters of the fundamentals. That's where we talk about executing these four fundamentals and bringing some fun and some energy into them today. But before we go through the fundamentals, let's remember, God's got a process. When he took the people from Egypt to the promised land, there were steps and stages and a process they went through. It didn't happen in one day. And in a similar way, for us to step into the promises and the inheritance that God has for us in Christ, I think there's a process. There's some steps and stages along the way. And very simply, I think it starts with believing God's got something better for our life. Better than we can ever ask or think or dream or imagine. And then it's being willing to move forward with his plan. To be obedient, to be willing to take those steps and move forward. And then we've got to learn to put off our old ways. And to embrace this new way of living, God's way of doing things. Where we learn to rest and we learn to trust in him. And to allow his beautiful plan to unfold in his perfect timing. So our first fundamental, 
Let's get positioned in the light today. Every day we've got to keep repositioning ourselves back into the light. And I think it starts with humility. Humbling ourselves in relationship to God. Humbling ourselves in relationship to other people. Because it's the humble who are given grace. It's the humble who are exalted and promoted. And we're going to receive this forgiveness from God. We're going to forgive ourselves in the middle. We're going to walk in forgiveness with other people. We're going to take our position in gratitude or in love today. Kind and patient and gentle. Always assuming the best. Keeping no record of wrongs. Delighting in the truth. Always hoping, always trusting, always persevering. Because love never fails. And we're going to take our position in gratitude and praise today. One of the greatest expressions of faith. And it's one of the easiest ways to maintain our positioning all day long. Is to stay positioned in gratitude and praise. And being in position is a big deal. Because it puts us in position to be able to receive everything that God has for us. Imagine a quarterback and a receiver. The quarterback throws the pass, but the receiver runs in the wrong direction. He's out of position to receive. When we step into the light, we're stepping into Christ. And God has taken everything that he has. and He put it all in him. And we get this amazing opportunity. We get access to all of those good things today. His spirit and power and presence. His love and peace and joy. His mind and wisdom. Purpose and grace. Health and energy. There's time and finances. Resources. Fellowship with God. Fellowship with people. And it's all available to be received in the light. And then we got to learn how to get it flowing through us out into the world. We'll see the fruit or the result of it in our life. So our first step, I believe, is to get in position. The second step is to magnify the light. We're going to turn up the brightness of this light within us. And it's going to expand the capacity where God can flow more of all those good things through us. It's also going to get this new covenant rooted and established in our heart. Where we become more fixed and consistent in it. And to magnify the light. We've talked about the example of two baskets on a balancing scale. One basket full of all the issues and problems and testings that we face. The other basket full of our praises to God. Which basket are we going to fill up? With our thoughts, with our words, with our focus, with our attention, our meditation. Which basket are we going to fill up as we go throughout the day? So to magnify the light, we can fill up that basket of praise. Praising God for who he is. Praising him for all that he's done. For his word and promises, his unfailing love and faithfulness. His mighty works that nothing's impossible with him. We can magnify all the good things that he's done for us in Christ. And just stay focused on all that's going well. All that he's already done. Because what he started, he's going to finish. He's going to see it through to completion. Now, this is not denying that there's issues or problems. It's simply choosing to fill up that other basket. In the face of issues and problems, to fill up that other basket. Because we trust that he can solve those problems a whole lot better than we can. But he does give us a choice. We could choose not to do any of this. We could stay stuck in pride and rebellion, bitterness, unforgiveness. Filling up that basket of the issues and problems. Venting, complaining, pouting. Toiling away in our mind trying to figure it all out. And that's where we need to learn to recognize the symptoms. Because when we're out of position or magnifying the wrong things, it's going to produce some symptoms in our life. We might have the tendency to retaliate at people or think God's retaliating at us. We might withhold things from people that we know to do. Or we might feel like God's withholding things from us. We might avoid people or give them the silent treatment or think that God's doing that to us. On the inside, you have this heaviness and weight and pressure like it's all sitting on you. you might have feelings of hopelessness or helplessness like you're trapped or you're stuck. And all that weight and pressure on the inside just drains all the energy out of you. Then emotionally, there's the fear and stress and worry. We're envisioning all these worst case scenarios, dreading things in the future. Flashbacks of bad things from the past. And unfortunately, this can become a habit. This can be a, become a pattern, a vicious cycle that seems to keep repeating over and over. But when we take our position in the light, there is rest in our soul. There's fullness and completion in him. We've got fellowship with God, fellowship with people. And when we rest, God goes to work. And all those good things he put within us begin to flow. And now everything is free and easy and effortless, energizing. And all those good things begin to flow. And now all of a sudden we've got hope in any and every situation. 
because we've got God with us. And if all this weren't enough, God gives us this amazing gift of grace. That if we ever get off track, it just takes a moment to turn it right back around, get back in position again. I think it's recognizing those symptoms, getting more present and saying, wait a minute, I'm off track right now. Father, forgive me. I'm off track. We receive that forgiveness from him. We forgive ourselves in the middle. If we need to reconcile with other people, we take those steps. And then we start praising and magnifying him for his grace and his goodness. And I like to pray this very simple prayer. Father, thank you that what you put within me is more than enough to handle whatever's coming at me today in a beautiful, graceful way. Help me tap into it and see it flowing at a greater level in my life today. You go through that simple process, that weight just lifts off you, everything begins to flow again. And then our third fundamental, we've got to stay tuned in today. Every day, God's trying to teach us and train us and navigate us throughout the day. But we've got to stay tuned in to him. My favorite way to do this is with a journal before bed. And one of the things I like to start with at the top of my journal is some filters. These filters are just short phrases, maybe one word or a statement that we keep rewriting every night at the top of our journal as a way to just keep these things top of mind. And the way I like to do my filters lately is I like to use God's rhythm. In the Old Testament, God's temple had a rhythm. There were things that needed to be done every year, every month, every week, and every day. And I like to implement that rhythm into my journal because I feel like it helps us stay tuned into him, helps us stay in step and in rhythm with him because our bodies are God's temple now. And so the way I do these filters, I start with four layers. The first layer at the very top is the big picture vision. For example, for me, that's abundant life training centers all over the world, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. That's my very top one to keep me navigating toward that. Then underneath that, I have the word that I feel like God gave me for this year of 2022, the year of the beautiful land, 2022, the year of the beautiful land. And then underneath that, I've got my monthly filter, which was based on our monthly message from this month, which was confidence through praise. Just a reminder, stay praising God that our confidence in him grows through praise. And then underneath that, I've got our weekly yearly cycle update as a reminder of where we are this season of the year. And this time of year, I've got my filter for this week is stay synced up with God. Stay in step with him. Stay connected to him. It's a reminder for us this time of year. And then I like to start my journal with gratitude and praise to get in position. And then to magnify. What went well today? What are all the ways I saw God showing up today? And then I like to ask this question. God, what were you trying to show me today? And just get still and listen and whatever comes into my mind, just begin to write those things down. And then we're going to stay tuned into him throughout the day because he's trying to navigate us throughout the day. If you ever feel like you're losing that connection with him, just take a couple minutes and slow down. Get aware of his presence. Think of it like plugging in a phone. You're going to get powered up in him again. And the final thing I like to do in my journal is to plan out the upcoming day with God. And I've learned to stick with, what do I know to do today? Because I learned sometimes I was getting ahead of God, toiling away in my mind, trying to figure things out, trying to force things to happen ahead of schedule. On the other side, sometimes I was procrastinating on things that I knew to do. So I've learned to stick with what do I know to do today? And that becomes the plan for the day. And then we wake up like a kid on Christmas morning, excited for the day because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we remember this very important principle. That the first thing out of our mouth every morning sets the tone for the whole day. As I began to learn about this, I began to seek God. What's the best thing for us to say? I felt like he was taking me back to Genesis chapter 1, the very first words we see God speak. Let there be light. So those are the first words out of my mouth in the morning. Let there be light. And it's amazing how just such a simple little thing brings a different energy into the day. And then we get connected with God. We start walking out that plan in full confidence in him. That he's right there with us every step of the way. And when we get to that place of confident faith, his grace begins to surge through us. He begins to go to work. He begins to beautify our lives. He begins to make things happen that we can never make happen on our own. And beauty is attractive and magnetic and begins to pull more and more of everything God has for us into our life. Let's take a look at fiduciary today. So what is a fiduciary? 
It's a person that acts on behalf of another person or persons and is putting their client's interests ahead of their own with a duty to preserve good faith and trust. So it's a manager. It's a steward. It's someone who's managing somebody else's interests for them. And we see here, Jesus is doing this for God. God put everything under Jesus. Hebrews 3.6 says, Now Moses was faithful as a servant in all of God's house, testifying to what will be spoken of later. But Christ is faithful as the son over God's house. And we are his house if we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope to which we boast. Hebrews 9.15 says, Therefore Christ is the mediator. He's the manager or the mediator of this new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, now that he has died to redeem them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. So we see that Jesus is faithful over all God's house. He only does what his father says to do. He puts God's interests ahead of his. And so today's communion is just a time of gratitude for that, that he's faithful over all of God's house. And he does that for God. He does it for us. And we are his house. And we're also asking for his help. To help us to be good fiduciaries ourselves. For example, it says in Corinthians that we're supposed to be stewards of the mysteries of God. And we have to prove ourselves faithful in this. We have a fiduciary responsibility as well. Putting God's interest, Jesus' interest ahead of our own, to be found faithful and trustworthy in these things. Obedient and loyal and trustworthy, transparent, skillful, accountable, putting our confidence in Him. So, Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful that Jesus is faithful over all of your house as a son, and we are His house. He's the mediator of this new covenant. And he does good. He's excellent at it. And we're asking for your help today. That we would also be faithful over your house. Faithful and trustworthy. Good fiduciaries. Good stewards or managers. We're asking for your help with that. To grow in that from this point on in our lives. We thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take a moment to remember. God sent us his one and only son to die for our sins out of his great love for us. Jesus is willing to come and humble himself even unto death on a cross. And the cup of God's wrath is poured onto his body. He was crushed by God. He was destroyed by God. But then he's raised back to life. He's victorious over death. And now that same victorious power lives on the inside of us. He connects us back to God, makes us right and holy and perfect in God's sight. All through his one sacrifice. So, Father, we thank you for this bread. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus said, this is a cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. His blood cleanses us, makes atonement for us. He releases us from darkness and transfers us into the light. Into the kingdom of Jesus. Which means he's the king. He's our Lord. Making him the Lord of our life. And he gives us this new covenant with God. This blood sworn oath. That God is with us and for us, working for our good. So Father, we thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your juice, you can take your juice. All right. Just a simple reminder today on workouts. 
just find the joy. I was just talking with somebody yesterday, just talking about finding the joy in movement. It's fun to move. Find the joy in movement. Take some of the pressure off of yourself in the workout. It's not supposed to be a miserable experience. It's supposed to be an enjoyable experience. Find the joy in just moving your body. Take some of that weight and pressure off a little bit. Back off just a little bit. And find that joy in just moving your body. It's the way it's meant to be. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to learn more about partnering with us in the Abundant Life Movement, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center. Dot com.